The scripture reading is 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but only one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may win. Amen. Let's listen to the anthem of Emmanuel Kainis Orchestra through video, and then we will watch the senior pastor's video sermon entitled Heaven, Session 3, Life in the Waiting Place of Heaven. Loving brothers and sisters, members of grand churches and local sanctuaries, all believers and viewers in the world who are attending this service through Internet, Last time I explained about the outskirts of paradise, which is the waiting place for heaven. Today, I will speak about how the saved people live in the outskirts of paradise. You and I have the hope that we will meet our Lord alive in the air. Then we won't have to stay in the waiting place of heaven. Countless souls who have been saved th since human cultivation began stay in the waiting place. If you hear about the life there, you'd understand that the kingdom of heaven is not some obscure spiritual world, but a very orderly and a system systematic place. Let me give you a question. The saved souls will go to the upper grave and the unsaved to the lower grave. Do you want to go to the upper grave or you don't? You want to go to the upper grave or not? Okay, then you are following the message well. You got it well. When I also speak about the lives of a few members who have entered the waiting place, please look back on yourself and see your faith compared with their faith in lives and pre properly prepare yourselves as the beautiful brides of the Lord. Brothers and sisters in Christ, after the great white throne judgment, many of the souls in the waiting place will enter their own dwelling places according to their levels of faith. Until then, they precisely follow the spiritual order in the waiting place. For example, those at um, lower levels of faith show their respect to those at higher levels of faith by greeting with a nod. How can this order be established there even before the judgment of God? We can see our faith as believers illustrated in the Bible as a race. When many runners start at the same time or according to the regular timings and finish their races, the times of all the runners are measured exactly and recorded. Their races are measured very accurately, recorded exactly to the minute and slit second, and then their rankings, um, ranking is decided accordingly. The winners will receive their prizes at the awarding ceremony, but they already know their own ranking when they finish the race. In other words, when they have completed the race, they are informed of their ranking through the records. Our faith is much the same as this example of the race. It said in 1 Corinthians 9.24, Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but only one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may win. The speed of each runner is recorded at the race, but what will be measured and recorded for each person according to our faith? Is it how long you have lived a religious life or the titles you have received? 
Or is it how many offerings you have given or how many tasks you have fulfilled? All these things are related to your heavenly rewards, but none of them is the ultimate standard for the record of your faith. The first standard of measure of your faith that is accepted to God is how much you have accomplished sanctification and how much you resemble the image of God. The second standard of measure is how faithfully you have been in all the aspects of the whole house of God. According to these two standards, the faith of every soul is exactly measured and recorded when the believer draws their last breath on this earth. When believers have completed the race of faith and are staying in the waiting place, they know their ranking from the first from the, uh, through the last, according to the record of their own faith. According to how sanctified you are and how faithfully you work. Now, the history of human cultivation has not finished, and we live in the end time of the world. So, we have more time in which we can improve the record of our level of our faith. You can see and learn from the deeds of faith of the fathers of faith who are at the high rank rankings. So, you will be able to get a much better record of faith as you want. Thus, Jesus said in Matthew 11:12, From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and violent men take it by force. You should diligently take hold of the heavenly kingdom by force. You know the word of God about New Jerusalem, and you have time to advance into heavenly kingdom. We have time. Some may think that the souls who are saved are all the children of God and ask why there are rankings in heaven and why different dwelling places, homes, and other rewards are given to each of them. The Bible clearly tells us that each of those who are saved will be at different levels of rank. A few sessions later, this will be explained in details. So today, let's survey this. Matthew 5.19 says, Whoever then annuls one of the list of these, these commandments and teaches others to do the same shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. You have to keep even the small command. If you abolish any of it, even though you are saved, you'll be only the... If you are the least in the heavenly kingdom, that means you will go to the only paradise. But whoever keeps and teaches them, we should keep the word and teach it. If you just teach without keeping it, it is only fleshly teaching then. So shall, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. If you are called great, you'll go to either the third kingdom of heaven or New Jerusalem. Just as 1 Corinthians 15.41 says, there is one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon and another glory of the stars. The first star differs from the star in glory. There are different glories for each person in heaven. On this earth, the brightest thing is the sun. So the greatest glory is the sun, and next is moon. And stars differ from one another in glory. They have different brightness. Well, the closer the star from the earth, the brighter it looks. So stars are different from one another in glory. Different rankings and different glories given to each in heaven is done according to the justice of God. If the souls who are saved just before death and the souls who have de dedicated their whole lives to the Lord, like the Apostle Paul, are to be treated in the same way, is it just?
If so, who would be willing to dedicate their lives to the Lord? They would be lukewarm in their faith if they believed that everyone will be treated in the same way. Would you try to pray in Daniel prayer meeting so much? Would you preach the gospel despite persecutions? Of course, some of you will do it, but most of you won't do it if you are treated all the same in the c a v e n a t kingdom. It is in the justice and love of God that He will reward each man differently according to what He has done and sown on earth. So, Jesus clearly said in Matthew 16:27, For the Son of Man is going to come in the glory of His Father with His angels, and will then repay every man according to his deeds. Yes, according to his deeds. And in Revelation 12, 22, 12, Behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me, to render to every man according to what he has done. The Lord is giving to us according to what we have done. As much as you have accomplished sanctification in the heart, you will sit at the higher ranking and enjoy better dwelling places and greater rivers in heaven. I'll give you a real illustration. A few days ago, there was an entrance examination for colleges. About 600,000 students took the exam examination, and each of them receives his or her ranking according to the scores. Because there is such a, an extremely large number of task, uh, test takers, according to whether or not a student gains or loses a single point, the student's place in the rankings goes up or down by tens to even hundreds of places. However, there are so many souls have been saved up, to, up until now. Their ranking has been decided, but your ranking may be changed according to your efforts. According to how much you live by the Word of God and go into spirit, the rank will be different. It won't be different just by hundreds or thousands like the students, but it can be tens of millions of difference. Why? There are so many people who have gone to heaven since the creation of the world. Especially there are so many who went to paradise. Now, your rank has changed according to what you do. If you do just one more thing, and if you are just a little bit more faithful, and according to how much you are sanctified, the rank will be so different. To the extent that you throw away one more evil and accomplish a good heart, your spiritual ranking will be able to rise as high as thousands or tens of thousands of place in the ranking. Suppose you have pre previously judged others clearly, but now changed and tried to understand everybody with goodness. And you have formerly harbored ill feelings when you were mistreated, but now give thanks in any kind of treatments. Then, your spiritual ranking in heaven will differ greatly with that little bit of change in your spirit and your goodness. There is a person who became the vice president of a certain group, and the former vice president is elected as the president. He said to me, Senior Pastor, I became the vice president. And I was thankful for what he said next. He said he was happy that the other person was elected as the president. Because another person was rec recognized more, he was happy and thankful. Yes, surely he is a member of my m i n If he was disappointed or if he, he has grumbles, he shouldn't have become even the vice president. Then his heart is so evil. I hope there is nobody like that in m a m i n If you have complaints and grumble uh, because you, have, you became the vice president and another person became the president, you should not be even the vice president. Therefore, I urge you to give thanks during the time of human cultivation with the with the hope for continual change in spirit. The ranking of the souls who finish their lives on earth and now stay at the waiting place cannot be changed anymore.
They have to live forever in the, in the decided ranking that has been given them according to their sanctification and their faithfulness in all God's house. When one enters heaven, only the spirit he has accomplished in, the, in his heart while living on the earth can enter there. The heart of flesh cannot go, but it will stay here. Only the heart of spirit will go. That's why your rank is decided in heaven according to how much spirit you cultivate, and you will go to different dwelling places. Just imagine, even the flesh is going up too. Then, even in the heavenly kingdom, you will have envy and jealousy, and especially in paradise, you will always be envious and jealous. Is it heaven? Heaven has only light and love. A heart of flesh cannot go. Only the part of our heart that is cultivated as spirit will go. That's why your brightness of your light becomes different according to how much spirit you have cultivated in you. In other words, the goodness and love that are in the spiritual heart will be allowed, so there will be no complaint or groaning, but only peace, thanksgiving, and love itself will be there. So when he meets someone whose spiritual heart is in the higher ranking in spirit, he feels love and respect for the person. And although he meets another person who is lower ranking in spirit, he never ignores or neglects the person. In heaven, the order is kept not by the command or first obedience, but by mutual love and respect coming from the heart. Each individual's glory and rewards are given after the great white throne judgment, but spiritual ranking of each individual, spirit soul, has been already decided when they enter the waiting, pla waiting place. In the waiting place, some are appointed as managers, and thus everything is in perfect order. So many saved souls stay there together, but none of them feel discomfort because everything is orderly. Brothers and sisters, what do you think the saved souls do in the waiting place? First of all, they learn spiritual knowledge from prophets. They come to know about God, the kingdom of heaven, and many other laws of the spiritual realm. Some of them have been saved without knowing about the word of truth of God because they believed and accepted, by, accepted God by faith. In the waiting place, they learn about the providence of human cultivation and the measure of faith. And they will learn about the kingdom of heaven that will enter, um, that they will enter after the great judgment. We will also learn about it in seven-year wedding banquet. The wedding banquet is really a banquet, and rather than learning, you will hear many testimonies of the prophets. You will hear how the prophets overcame the persecutions and how they could go into New Jerusalem. You will have these times of grace with prophets who have entered New Jerusalem. At the waiting place, the souls acquire fundamental qualifications and ways of living for eternal life in heaven, just as freshmen have to attend and learn at their school orientation. Even for companies, they have a preparatory train, trainings for the new employees. It's not only once, they constantly have some kind of special education time once or twice um, every year. They may even have some physical training sessions. At the waiting place, the souls acquire fundamental qualifications and ways of living for eternal life in heaven. Unlike earthly learning, learning spiritual knowledge at the waiting place is neither boring nor difficult. Instead, they will be filled with much grace and joy as they learn. Now, those who have uh, a longing for heaven and the spiritual realm feel very interesting when you hear the testimonies about heaven and the spiritual realm. Is it interesting? Yes. You say it's interesting. But I don't understand something. It's quite ama amazing. When some of you come to see me, I ask you, have you read the book Heaven? Have you read the book Hell?
Then they hesitate to answer. That means they didn't read. Some people say, I read it, but it means he read it, but not all. He's not a new believer. I know their faces too. If somebody doesn't answer, I ask again, then he would say, I read only a little. Then I look at them with so much amazement. Maybe they couldn't feel why I was looking at them with so much amazement. What is so amazing about it? Well, when I was in middle school or high school, I liked reading. If I borrowed the novel, then I would stay all night reading the novel. I cannot stop reading it in the middle. It's very interesting, and so I finish it overnight and then go to the school. So I stay up all night and go to the school. But because they were very interesting, I didn't fall asleep or anything. I liked some monthly magazines at the time. Also, because I like history very much, I liked history magazine. Also, there were some women's magazine, too. It was difficult to get them, and they were expensive. So I usually uh, read those magazines that were easy to get. So once I open it, I have to finish it to the end and then go to school. Of course, if it's too long and if I cannot finish it at one night, I read it the next day. Day. Then, each, even in the school, I think of the part I couldn't finish, and I wanted to read it at home. Even about the worldly things, we will stay all night to read. Then, how can those who will go will get to heaven a kingdom not read about the life of heaven? How can they not read this book, heaven? Also, aren't they curious about how hell looks like and what will happen there, so that they won't go to hell? Aren't they curious about what will happen there? They don't even read it, and that's why it's amazing. That's why I look at them with amazement. They don't read the books about having a kingdom where they will live forever, and if they do not read the proper Christian life, they will fall into hell, and they don't even read about hell. And they say they are leading a life in faith? Then do they really have hope for having a kingdom? I wonder whether or not their heart is taken by the world. So you will hear these things with so much interest. Suppose you are listening to the testimonies from one of the fathers of faith recorded in the Bible. Suppose Abraham, the father of faith, is telling you about the kind of heart he had in offering his only son Isaac and how he was able to show the perfect deeds of faith. And Eliza, Daniel, and the Apostle Paul are with you and speak about their testimonies. What a touching and happy time it is. Thus, it is not boring or burdensome to learn spiritual knowledge in heaven. You study endlessly even in heaven, but it's different from studying in this world. It's not boring or difficult, and there is no test. It is only so much fun to study. You will learn the things that you couldn't understand on this earth. If we say from eternity through eternity, what is this from eternity? We will learn the history of the Father God even before the eternity. Also, you will learn with what kind of heart the atti and attitude God the Father made each of the animals and insects and how He placed them at the time of creation. So those things will be so interesting. If you don't want to, you don't have to learn them, because in the heavenly kingdom there is no di dictatorship, neither is there any test of or flunking. But I think there will be nobody who will not want to learn those things. In heaven, there are so many unusual things that we cannot experience on earth. So learning something in heaven is new every day and endless. Even on this earth, as you go into spirit, every wondrous and mysterious things happen. You hear many extraordinary testimonies. 
One who is 85 or 87 years old is getting a new tooth. She lost her teeth, but two of her upper teeth and the lower tooth are growing, so she feels much more comfortable to chew. When they were beginning to come out, she knew the teeth were coming out. So she went to the dentist and he said, I mean, he considered her like a strange person. But later, they really came out. She was telling me that, so I told her to go to the dentist and show it to them, to him. He considered it strange, so if he shows it to him, he may receive grace and gain some faith. He will gain new medical knowledge too. He will learn that tooth cannot grow at old age, but by the power of God it is possible because he will firsthand see it. While those souls stay at the waiting place, they learn spiritual knowledge but wonder what is happening on earth. I don't mean they are curious about worldly things. They wonder what has happened to their churches, how much the churches have fulfilled the tasks assigned by God, and how much they have accomplished the mission of world evangelism. They cannot come down to the earth. So God understands their hearts and let them hear the current news of the earth through some of the angels that are permitted to come to the earth and through some prophets whose faith is at the highest level. I will explain about the prophets who do these duties a little later. It is a pleasure to the souls who stay at the waiting place when the angels and the prophets tell them the current news of the earth. God revealed to me about a few souls who used to attend this church and now stay at the waiting place. The souls who attended Mount Min Central Church stayed together in a separate part of the waiting place. Just as Jesus said in Matthew 18:18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, Truly I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall have been bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth shall have been loosed in heaven. The souls who serve the same shepherd and the same church have a special fellowship in heaven. It's uh, the same between husband and wife and parents and children. If the couple love the spiritual love in this world, they will love each other much more, and they will always meet each other. But if they led a fleshly kind of Christian life, if they were a fleshly couple, they may not have a good relationship as that. It's because they will blame each other. They may think, if the husband treated me better, I could have gone into better heaven dwelling place. Also, the husband may say the same thing. If my wife served me better, I could have gone to a better place in heaven. They will not have resentment, but anyway, fleshly love is useless. It's eternal when you love eternal, spiritual love. The souls who attended this church and being saved stay in a separate place in the waiting place. They are always wondering what has happened to this church. They pray for the world evangelization and the construction of the grand sanctuary that are providences assigned to our church by God. A senior deaconess who passed away in the providence of God had prayed for the church and the shepherd a few times every day as a prayer devotee. Now she is always praying in the same way in the waiting place. Thus, the souls who attended this church and been saved live together, pray for the church and the shepherd, and rejoice when they hear the good news about our church. When they hear some special news about the overseas crusades where we gave great glory to God, they rejoice and dance like a party, like in party. Likewise, the souls who stay at a waiting place for heaven rejoice and have a happy time when they hear the news about the earth. Brothers and sisters in Christ, there are some souls who have not stayed in, the, in this waiting place for heaven. 
Those who accomplished the whole spirit and gained the qualifications to enter New Jerusalem, and those who were left to drop alive during the Old Testament, did not stay at the upper grave but entered directly into New Jerusalem. If they were not lifted up alive, although they had the qualifications to enter New Jerusalem, they went to the upper grave first. But in the New Testament times, those who are qualified to enter New Jerusalem will directly go to New Jerusalem without staying at paradise. They help with God's works, staying in a separate place in New Jerusalem. They have their houses, but they don't go in there yet. After the great white throne judgment, they will go into their respective houses. Until then, they have a separate place, which is around the throne of God. They are helping Him there. The, uh, the separated place prepared for the souls is one of the uh, one of the few special spaces that God put into the Holy Spirit city of New Jerusalem, whose length, width, and height are all 1,500 miles. Eliza, Enoch, Abraham, Moses, the Apostle Paul, the Apostle Peter, Apostle John, David, and Samuel accomplished complete sanctification in their hearts and were faithful to the responsibilities of the whole house of God. They and a few more stay in a separate place in the holy city of New Jerusalem and help God with His works. It doesn't mean that they cannot or won't come down to the outskirts of paradise. They can go down not only to paradise but also to the earth with the permission of God. For example, when Jesus was transfigured on the mountain during his public ministry, Eliza and Moses came down to talk with Jesus. In conclusion, the souls who accomplished whole spirit and were saved stay in New Jerusalem and work according to specific tasks assigned to each of them. It is written that Prophet Samuel came up out of the earth in the Old Testament. When we published the book, Heaven in the U.S., the publishing company had a doubt about it, about the book, and refused to publish it. They asked how the dead prophets could come down on this earth because it is written. Uh, it is written they can go down to the earth with the permission of God. They said it was not written in the Bible. So we replied with the base of the Bible, with, with the base in the Bible. Then it was published. They are very particular. They check if there is anything against the words in the Bible. After we gave the answer with the base of the Bible, they um, published it right away. The souls who accomplished the Holy Spirit and were saved, were saved stay in New Jerusalem and work according to specific tasks assigned to each of them. Some of them serve beside the throne of God, uh, while some others go down to the waiting place for heaven on the outskirts of paradise and teach the saved souls spiritual knowledge. Abraham, the father of faith, used to take care of the saved souls in the upper grave until our Lord Jesus resurrected and ascended into heaven. The prophets I have above told you did not stay at the waiting place for heaven. Conversely, some souls stay in the waiting place, the upper grave forever and ever. They are the souls who died in the womb of the mother and were saved. Most of the souls who die in the womb are saved, exact, uh, very few. They are six months old or older. God gives the spirit in the sixth month. Before the sixth month, God doesn't give the spirit. In that case, if they die in the womb, they will disappear like animals. Their soul will disappear. But from the sixth month, the babies will be given the spirit. If they die in the fetus, uh, they don't go through any human cultivation, so they live in the upper grave. But not all of them go, will go there. Still, there are a few who will not be saved. I will explain about it next week. What kind of souls cannot be saved among the souls who die in the womb? 
And why do the souls who die in the womb and are saved have to stay at the upper grave forever? Actually, the souls have not put in the perfect shape as a human being in the womb. What kind of spiritual body will they have? What kind of spiritual body will the souls put on who were saved through human cultivation and stay at the waiting place? This will be explained in detail next time. Sometimes you ask such questions. How will we have the seven-year ba wedding banquet? Many of you are curious about the seven-year wedding banquet and ask about it. I will explain about it in the following sessions. I will explain how we will have uh, how we will have the wedding banquet for seven years. Well, God says those seven years will pass like a moment. It will pass so quickly. For those seven years, this earth will suffer from tribulations. Those, the souls on this earth will feel the seven years very long. But the souls who enter the wedding banquet are so happy, and the seven years will pass like a moment. I will explain also about it later. Let me conclude the message. Brothers and sisters in Christ, today I have explained to you what kind of life the souls live who stay at the waiting place. They have completed the race of faith, namely human cultivation, and being been assigned their own ranking according to the records of their deeds and worked and lived in the decided order. In addition to the souls who accomplish the Holy Spirit and have entered New Jerusalem, instead of the waiting place for heaven, and who help God with His works, there are also those who stay at the upper grave forever. You have to realize how thankful it is to experience human cultivation on earth. You may shed tears at some sorrows or feel pain in your heart on earth. But through it all, you can discover the true and everlasting force driving toward the kingdom of heaven. You suffer during the trials, but those who have good faith will not feel it's difficult even during the trials. Why? They rejoice and just give thanks as God's word tells us. They just look up to the Father and know that the result will be a blessing. But even though you suffer a lot during the trials, after you overcome it, you testify that it was a very precious time. You say, because of that trial, my soul became prosperous, and I am receiving blessings like this. Because of the trial, her soul became prosperous. She came to have true faith, and she received God's blessings and paid off hundreds of, of thousands of dollars of that. Because she can lead a blessed, blessed life like this, she is so thankful for the trial she had before. It's the same with the students. When their parents make them study so much, they may feel very hard, but once they get into a very good college and a good company, they will thank their parents. May each of you clearly understand how your heavenly ranking will be measured and decided according to the measure of your spirit, and may you go into spirit and Holy Spirit quickly. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Let us receive the prayers for the sick of the senior pastor through video. Please lay your hands on your sick power the or if you are not sick, please lay your hand on your chest and receive the prayer for your desire of your heart with faith. Hallelujah! Almighty God, our loving Father, please lay your hands on all believers who are receiving this prayer now. Show your works that transcend time and space on those who are receiving this prayer through GCN Internet and Satellite TV in branch churches and local sanctuaries and all other children of God around the world. Give them the faith to believe from heart, drive away negative thoughts and doubts, and drive away all tests and trials. From head to toe, all entrails, joints, nerves, tissues, and cells, whatever the sick part may be, burn them with the fire of the Holy Spirit and the original light. 
In the name of Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, all diseases, germs, and viruses, and infirmities go away. Light come. Please scorch all their terminal and incurable diseases with the fire of the Holy Spirit. Drive away all endemic diseases, including malaria. All contagious diseases, including cold, flu, and fever, go away. Protect them from all kinds of germs and viruses. Heal them of all stomach, lung, liver, breast, urine, and intestinal cancers, AIDS, leukemia, cerebral apoplexy, high low blood pressure, diabetes, that a problem, and heart, lung, and women's diseases, and all inflammations go away. Heal them of polio, stroke, arthritis, and herniated discs. Back pain, headache, neuralgia, and all other pains disappear. Epilepsy, autism, depression, neuroses, and other mental diseases go away. All kinds of paralysis be loosened, get up, walk, and leap. Let the eyes see well, let the ears heal well. Let the blind come to see, the deaf to hear, and the mute speak. Heal them of after effects of all kinds of accidents, fix their broken bones, restore them from burns, let the heat and burning sensation go away. Father, let there be no scar left. Be cleansed from all kinds of drug addictions, poisoning, and substance abuse. Let the dead nurse tissues and cells be regenerated. Bring the dead back to life. Give them the blessings of conception. Receive the blessing of conception. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, the ruler of the power of the air, the evil forces of heavenly places, and that their servants go away. Go away, evil, unclean, force, and deceitful spirits, separating spirits, and all forces of darkness. Loosen the bond bonds of wickedness. Darkness, go away, light come. Father God, give them strength to crowd in prayer and the power to cast off sins and become sanctified. As their souls prosper, let all things go well with them and let their families be evangelized. Protect them from all kinds of accidents and disasters throughout this week and bless them to lead a prosperous life without any problems. With the fireworks of the Holy Spirit, heavenly hosts and angels, and with your blazing eyes, protect all your children, their families, workplaces, and business fields. Give students wisdom and understanding and give them enthusiasm and fervor to study hard. Please keep their hearts and minds from worldly things and let them love God more fervently. Whether your children eat or drink or in whatever they do, let them do it all to live a life glorifying you, Father God. Let them be able to testify about the living God, saying, I've met and experienced God and received these answers and blessings. Father God, thank you. Be glorified alone. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen.